Now, the former president says if you listen to this, it exonerates him. That's not the case. The question is, is it damning? What is it instructive of? Why does it matter? Renato Mariotti is a former federal prosecutor. Jesse Benal is an attorney for former President Trump. They both understand this area of law very well, and they have different takes. So let's hear them both. Renato, what do you hear? <laughs> what I hear is someone saying that he's got a highly confidential secret document, and he is showing that uh, to somebody who isn't supposed to have access to it. I mean, in the longer clip of it, you can actually hear papers rustling. You also hear him say he could have declassified it, but he didn't do that. So it's uh, very problematic, and I think going to be used, there's a reason it's mentioned in the indictment, it's going to be used by the prosecutor to suggest that the defenses that Trump is relying on are not valid. Uh, Jesse Benal, one question, a fact question, and then I want your take. I don't understand what case he was talking about when he said this totally wins my case. Do you have any idea what case he was talking about? Well, I, I don't know if it's an actual case. I have no factual knowledge of that. But okay. I think one thing that's, that's very clear um, is that uh, you have this disagreement between President Trump and General Milley uh, about discussions that they had during President Trump's term of office. And that raises, I think, a very important question. And that is, if this is national defense information, then when, that, uh, when uh, Milley's information was leaked in 2021, why wasn't there a prosecutor appointed then to go after that information? Well, what, and it's what, only let's do this, though, Jesse. Let's do one yeah. piece of mis or malfeasance at a time, okay? The, hey, go after that guy too, doesn't work for me. Let's just deal with one bad thing at a time. I got a, enough equal Hunter access, Biden stuff going on. Equal, equal justice under the laws is important, I, Yeah, I know, Chris. but not everything raises the same amount of questions. This is a former president. He said he didn't have the documents. Now he seems to be very aware, not only that he has them, but of why he wanted to keep them. That's what I want you to opine on, Jesse. Then I'll bounce it back to Renato for a counterpoint. But it seems in the tape, fair listening, or do you disagree, that he knows he has classified information. He knows that it is sensitive enough that he needs to ask somebody else in the room if he can even show it to someone. Doesn't that show that he has willfully retained things that were classified? Well, there's a couple answers to that. And first, and perhaps most importantly, is the government has not been able to produce a document that would uh, correspond with what they're talking about. And President Trump has said that, that there was no document um, uh, that, he, that he had. And so the very fact that he may have said that, and if it was bluster, uh, for instance, then there is no crime there. Um, and that is, I, I think, one of the most important things is if he's looking at building plans or something and wrestling around papers, um, there's no offense there. Um, but it, beyond that, uh, presidents um, uh, do have a right to always have access to their presidential papers. That much is very, very clear in the law. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the, the second part, really, uh, of that analysis is one of the things prosecutors would have to prove in this case is that uh, by keeping and, and retaining those documents, he was attempting to harm the United States. And there's absolutely no evidence that President Trump was ever trying well, to harm the United States. I don't know that you have to States have, have you don't have to have uh, malicious intentions uh, to get the a retention Rosen charge case. against you. Rosen but Renato, case. Let me, let me, let me ask Renato yeah, about true. that. Uh, and Renato, by the way, you're the first person I'm inviting to poker night at my house. You have no poker face at all. Your face well, it's hard. is, you're just, it's hard. you have no game at all when it comes to holding well, back I, what you're trying to say. First, let's well, deal with I, the access argument that Jesse just made. A president always has access to their papers in this form and fashion. No, well, that's not true. I mean, he, he, he chose his words carefully. I give Jesse credit. He's giving a very, he's giving a very difficult argument. He's trying to explain the inexplicable. You know, yes, presidents have access to their records that are under the custody and control of the National Archives. So he knows as well as I do, because he's read their Presidential Records Act, that these are not supposed to be under the possession, custody, and control of the President of the United States once they've left office. So that's that's a, that's absolutely clear. But look, he is right that technically speaking, this document that's discussed is not mentioned. The problem that he has, this, this document has not been charged. If it was charged, it would have to be charged in New Jersey, where this conversation took place anyway, not in Florida. The problem for the former president is this document goes
goes to a state of mind and it's going to be admitted at trial. There's a reason it's mentioned in the indictment. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.